And President Biden says the U.S. has an ironclad commitment to its allies in the Pacific region. The president making his remarks at the first ever trilateral summit with Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. The meeting coming amid growing concern about China's provocative actions in the region and after joint naval exercises in the South China Sea. Lucille Toulousan brings us that story. The U.S., Japan, Australia and the Philippines held the military exercises to help safeguard the rule of law and uphold the right to sail through and fly over the South China Sea. While the four countries reaffirmed support of a 2016 ruling in validating China's expansion in the region, the communist regime continues to ignore it. Since starting with mere fishermen sheds in 2013, China has built seven artificial islands complete with buildings, military installations, and airstrips inside the Philippines' exclusive economic zone. During that time, Chinese Coast Guard and militia have taken aggressive action against Filipino Coast Guard ships and fishermen. A recent water cannon shattered the windshield of a Philippine resupply ship, injuring four Navy officers. At the Day of Valor commemoration of war heroes, Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. condemned China's violence and urged Filipinos to be brave. Some portend clear and present threats to our sovereign rights and in fact have already caused physical harm to our people. Marcus added, let us not allow ourselves to be oppressed in our own sovereign land. Let us remain united and patriotic. Japan's ambassador to the Philippines reaffirmed his country's commitment to the region. By upholding the international order based on the rule of law, Japan and the Philippines, together with other like-minded countries, become united partners in building a world founded on peace, harmony and goodwill. During the U.S.-led naval exercises, China sent out air and sea patrols into the South China Sea. Security analyst Dr. Romel Banlawi told CBN News that increased U.S. military presence in the area puts the Philippines in a difficult situation. The problem is if you involve great powers in our position in the West Philippine Sea, you are changing the discourse of the South China Sea from territorial disputes to great power competition. And it's that's more difficult to manage. So for me, it's raising the risk of armed conflict in the South China Sea. According to one White House advisor, this historic trilateral summit of Japan, the Philippines, and the U.S. will open a new era of cooperation and commitment that hopefully leads to a free, peaceful, and more prosperous Indo-Pacific region. Lucille Talusan, CBN News, Manila. Okay, thank you, Lucille. Gordon, back over to you. Well, the Prime Minister of Japan addressed the you know, Congress yesterday. I didn't see this quote widely reported, but I think he, he's underlying something that our allies around the world uh, are concerned. And they're concerned about a rising isolation within the United States. Uh, are we going to stand with Israel? Are, are we going to stand with Ukraine? Are we going to stand with Taiwan as, as, as China is making threats to invade? The rise of authoritarian governments is greatly concerning to the democracies of the world. Here's what he said. You believe that freedom is the oxygen of humanity. The world needs the United States to continue playing this pivotal role in the affairs of nations. And yet, as we meet here today, I detect an undercurrent of self-doubt among, among some Americans about what your role in the world should be. We should never project that we have self-doubt, that we don't believe in freedom, and we don't believe in the dem democratic ideals that founded this nation, that we have uh, democracies, we defend the right of people to elect their own governments. But you see around the world, this is obviously not the standard that uh, Russia is following, that China is following. And let me underline, Hamas is not following this. They haven't had an election since 2006. They got elected into power and they said, that's really nice. We're not going to have another election. The same thing in the Palestinian Authority. They haven't had a free election there in a long time.
Are we going to stand with democracies? Are we going to understand that liberty is the oxygen of humanity, that humanity flourishes where there's liberty? Uh, it, you know, the, the defense of democracy is for that one purpose, to ensure liberty for all people. So when I hear isolationist talk, when I hear that, well, the money going to Ukraine should be spent on our southern border, uh, we're, we're mixing our messages. And the southern border problem has to do with a current administration that wants to goose up the numbers for the next census in order to seize power in the, in the House of Representatives. That's the long game they're playing. When you count people, you don't count citizens in your census. And so if you have more people in per certain areas, you're going to change the balance of power. Uh, it's got nothing to do with money. It has to do with an overall strategy. When are we going to wake up to it and stay firm with our overall strategy that we believe freedom is the oxygen of humanity and we all need that freedom and we need to defend that freedom both here and abroad?